Welcome to the 24.4 release webinar. And uh, I'm Pooni Mon, uh, Product Manager for Content Manager. And uh, we'll talk about the checkout to uh, Google Drive. Uh, I have a video here that I'll be talking through. And uh, this is part of our Manage in Place strategy. Uh, we wanted to expand it to Google ecosystem. The 24.2 release had a Manage in Place with Google Drive. and uh, we added the checkout capability to Google Drive in the previous release. I would mark this complete in this release because we have added or extended this, that capability into the web client. So users on uh, web client uh, are also able to check out to Google Drive post the configuration. It operates on a very similar philosophy, similar principle as that of OneDrive. Um, you configure the uh, Google app on the Google console, um, read the Client ID, client secret, configure it, register it with Content Manager, uh, bit of trim config changes, and you're all set. It works simple. We have a new icon. Uh, you can look at that icon and easily distinguish that it's a Google Drive icon. Uh, from our system options, uh, Enterprise Studio system options, uh, look at Google Drive to quickly set up the client ID, client secret, and uh, give it a quick test on the connection. So testing this would actually take you to the Google uh, login. We are using a user for checking the access, uh, username, password. It would show up the access that we have configured in the console for it to work properly. And uh, once we have tested the connection, we are good for immediate use. So what I do here is I go to the web client um, and when you open up the web client, uh, it takes you to the Google login. And simultaneously, I'm showing you uh, the Google Drive folder, uh, folder structures, uh, so that uh, I want to establish the fact that whatever folder structure we got in Google Drive, once the connection is established, uh, checking out to Google Drive actually pulls all the uh, folder structure into CM for you to be able to check out. So in this case, we created a folder called Web Client Upload. Um, we'll go back, log into the Web Client. Uh, this is a different user than what we are using in desktop, so you will see two different folder structures. So in this case, we created a web client upload, and we will try to uh, check out a record into this folder. So you have the icon, Google Drive icon, which is easy to locate, and um, as you can see, it is browsing the folders. We select the web client upload, and we'll check it out here. Now, along with this, you can also share this with multiple users based on their email IDs. Now, it can be a mail ID or you can select a location from within Content Manager. Note that this location should have a email ID, else it throws an error that you require a suitable mail address. This being a dummy email ID, we will uh, skip this and just go ahead with a few comments and uh, share it. Check it out, sorry. Now, going back into the Google Drive, we see that this document is out. We we'll try to edit it in the Google Docs. Um, while we are at it, we'll do a spell check, add few information. And because it is all online, you don't need to explicitly save this. Uh, I think all of us know that it gets saved automatically. And we just go back to the Content Manager to see, uh, check it back in, check in the document. Make a new revision, add a few comments as usual, and check it in. Previewing this document, we can see that this new information is added and the new revision number is also created. Now, this is very similar um, as we saw in web client and desktop client. Uh, we'll try to check out the records here. Uh, right click on it, check out to Google Drive, um, search for a structure. So this is a different Google user, so you will see a different uh, structure here. So it actually pulls the folder structure correctly. So different user. Now what we do here is uh, we add a couple more uh, users where, with whom we can share this. So we add one via locations. We add a email ID manually. And once we do that, uh, the email notifications uh, go out to these two users. So user one, user two. What we'll do next is uh, we'll go to the Google Drive of these users. We will go to the email uh, of these users to see, work on the link, collaborate on the document, add a comment uh, from each user so that we can finally check it back in. So we are adding comments by admin. We are adding 
uh, logging into mail accounts by different users, user one, user two, and uh, once we are done with the collaboration, uh, we check it back in. So if you have checked it out to Google Drive, you will see an option written from Google Drive. Once we do that, um, let's quickly preview the document. As you see, you can see the I flew by quickly. You can see the preview has all the comments from all different users. Right now, from a uh, security and auditing perspective, uh, of course, every uh, transaction is uh, aud audited and recorded. So when we checked out documents uh, and we share documents, all of this is captured. So user one, user two checked out. So all of the events are captured. All right, so moving on, there's just one uh, pointer that I would like to add here. Uh, it's a good to know thing. So Google Drive, based on the format of the document, uh, you need to take care what formats are natively supported with Google Docs. Now, if we are opening a text file in Google Docs and saving it, Google unfortunately creates a second instance of it, second copy, which cannot be checked back into CN. So uh, for this to work properly, you will need to have a uh, native editor uh, within the Google ecosystem for text files. So in this case, uh, in this example, we will check it out again, and uh, we will try to open this in a native text editor that we have added from the Google store. Once you use proper files, uh, proper editor, all of the changes uh, are captured in the same file and uh, the check in check out process is seamless. So that's something which uh, is a Google limitation and uh, we have actually captured that in the documentation also. Right, so that concludes uh, the checkout to Google Drive uh, demo. I hope you are able to see my screen now. So we got a refined search uh, as a feature in 24.4. Now this is our take on uh, how to simplify such uh, with design inspirations from modern tools. Uh, now, I think all of us know that uh, you can create complex search queries using this advanced search editor and um, an administrator or a person who's searching it needs to remember all of the uh, complex uh, operators and it's easy to build, but it takes some time. So it's not very, uh, uh, visual as we have designed it. So this is primarily based on um, how people do searches in uh, most of the common commerce platforms. And uh, what we have introduced here is a new filter icon, uh, which opens up a small uh, left panel. And this shows all of the metadata from the search results as uh, filterable items. Now this is only available in grid view because it's a grid view actually enables you to uh, work in bulk. So so what this new panel does is uh, you can expand on this uh, each of these filters and you can add in results to further refine the search results that you have uh, displayed in the uh, in the main window. So it's quite simple. It's part of the web client and um, We'll have a video once again. All right uh, on my screen, I'm showing you uh, the new refined search. Uh, we start off with a, a results window, and uh, when we click on the new icon of uh, search filters, it uh, shows up the new panel. Now, this is just us establishing the uh, search editor, the existing search capabilities, and uh, from that, we will start looking at defining the results down to. Uh, let's say a particular title or assignees. So click on this, get a new panel. Let's search by assignee. Uh, we have four different uh, locations in assignee, and uh, we select, select one contributor, filter it, and we see all the results uh, from the contributor as assignee. Now you can add multiple, uh, you can combine multiple uh, filters into this, and uh, by default, uh, the search window only loads 10 filters. So if your search results has 15 to 20 metadata, you will need to do load more filters. 
and uh, you would eventually see all of them. So the search filters has several uh, uh, filters such as date, category, client, container, and you can use all of these to define your search um, to give you an exact result that you are searching for. Having said that, uh, there are a few limitations uh, that I would say work in progress that I would like to talk about. And uh, in the search, in the refined search, we have uh, the filter working only for a few uh, items. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, so the filter is applicable for uh, certain object types like uh, locations, uh, text, records, date range numbers. Basically, all any metadata searchable in the search editor. Moving on, uh, there are a couple of incremental innovations on the MS team integration. Uh, one is the revoke expose record. So customers using the expose capability in MS Teams integration know that you can surface a record from content manager to be uh, viewed in a channel. Uh, it is non-editable and uh, it's a read-only mode, read-only mode and post the collaboration, the records just used to stay there. Now, this release, we have added a revoke capability. The second screenshot uh, that you can see, it actually revokes the expo expose and returns the uh, record, removes the record from uh, the channel. The search capability is uh, uh, another incremental innovation. Uh, we have added the search field uh, in the channel window, in the channel section, and folders and subfolders can be searched for uh, the full file name and the initial string of the file name. So that's a small change, but very useful. Thank you everyone for attending the 24.4 uh, webinar. You have a great day.